Are you fucking kidding me? Greasingmachines.com This is my 2005 Crown Victoria. I bought this car off an elderly lady a few months ago when I decided it was time for me to find a successor to my old car. It has had a few minor issues, such as needing some new light bulbs and side markers, but today I finally got around to tackling the largest of these problems I found during the test drive. During my test drive of the car, I noticed a slight vibration when braking. I figured there must be an unevenly worn rotor as I felt a slight vibration going through the brake pedal as I braked. The car had also been sitting nearly an entire year before I bought it, so that could have been the cause of this problem. I bought the parts for the car when I bought it, but I kept putting off this chore until now as the brake still functioned fine. Now, what made me get around to doing this was that earlier in the day my buddy called me up to help him out with his car. He needed a jump start and I really felt inspired after helping him install a new battery. So after helping him out, I went over to my local AutoZone to rent the torque wrench needed to do this brake job. Armed with my limited experience and my handy Haynes manual, I got started. If you're ever working on a car, I recommend investing into one of these as they are incredibly useful. They have lots of photos illustrating how to take apart and rebuild almost anything on a car. Plus they list the torque specs for all the bolts. Now before pulling off the calipers, it's best to remove the cap of the brake reservoir. With my brake reservoir cap removed and the car still on the ground, the next step is to break the lug nuts free. These lug nuts are size 13 16 inch. The factory spec is listed in the manual at 100 foot pounds for these bolts. You can see as I struggle a little bit to get these lug nuts broken free. Now with the lug nuts loosened, I jacked up and supported the front of the car with my jack stands. When doing this, make sure you have your e-brake engaged and something to chalk the wheels on the back. Also be sure and know where your jack points are. The Crown Victoria, being a full frame sedan, can be supported nearly anywhere on the frame. With the first wheel off, the next step is to remove the caliper slide pin bolts. These are two 14mm bolts from the factory. Not. 
With a bit of struggle, the first bolt snapped free. There it goes, finally. Uh oh. And I literally mean snapped. I had broken the head off the slide pin bolt. At this point, what was I going to do? Would I even be able to fix this? After some research, the answer was yes, but I would need to go buy new caliper bolts and slide pins to do so. I could order myself a new pair for later. Moving on to the second bolt, and that one ended up breaking too. I'm not off to a good start here. With those two bolts broken free though, I was able to pull off the first brake caliper. As you can see in this image, the two pads were pretty worn down compared to the new pads I have to install. Also shown here are the pads I ended up pulling off the other wheel. You can see how unevenly worn those pads are on the driver's side compared to the passenger side. That must have been causing all the vibration. The next two bolts I need to remove are these two 18mm bolts holding on the caliper bracket. I went to work with my breaker bar. No luck. I tried to remove these bolts for over an hour and a half and neither budged. These bolts must be seized on there. Would I ever be able to replace these rotors? Oh, and I also happened to break my 18mm socket in the process. Good job me. On the other side of the car, which I wasn't recording at this point due to frustration, I had a similar experience. Both caliper pin bolts snapped off and the bracket bolts wouldn't budge. There were many casualties that afternoon. So now I needed two pairs of caliper pins. I called my local AutoZone and fortunate for me they had one pair in stock and I would be able to get another pair the following day. With one set of pins I could at least set the calipers back on the brackets, reinstall the wheels and park the car for the night. I can install the second set the next day. So that was my plan. While out grabbing my new caliper pins I stopped by the Home Depot to claim on the unlimited lifetime warranty for my 18mm socket. So here's the part where I feel demoralized having to install my new brake pads without putting on new rotors. After I reinstalled the calipers, I got the wheels back on and parked the car for the night. That night, I decided to watch some videos online on how to best remove the bracket bolts, because you know, I'll have a second chance at them tomorrow when I get my new parts. On Chris Fix's Brake Job Tips video, I stumbled upon this comment. My tip! Remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey, but not on your side. The bolts that hold the caliper and bracket are facing opposite from you, so when you go to loosen them, you're turning toward your right, which is the bolts left. I accidentally snapped my caliper bolt in half by tightening it with all my might when I meant to loosen it. 
I don't know, maybe I'm just stupid, and while well, it sounds like common sense, I looked back at my footage from that day. And there it was. Well, I felt really stupid after that. But hey, if I actually loosen my bracket bolts in the correct direction, maybe I can get my new rotors installed. The next day. After picking up my new caliper pins, it was time to get back into the brake job. Repeating the same steps from yesterday, I returned to where I was stuck. Now to loosen the caliper bracket bolts. Brackets loose. Out with the old, in with the new, baby. Success. Bolts removed, old rotors removed. Out with the old, and in with the new. I did it. I can't believe applying a little common sense was all I needed. Could you imagine if I ended up shearing the heads off those bracket bolts? I would have been toast. With the new rotors installed and the brackets reinstalled, using my torque wrench, these two bolts go down to 90 foot-pounds. Placing the caliper brackets back on, these two bolts go to 30 foot pounds. These are also the new bracket pin bolts. Kidding me. As you could hear by my frustration, looks like I overtorqued the bottom bolt somehow and snapped my new bolt. Well, somehow I was able to extract one of the bolts from the other slide pins. These bolts look pretty generic. I wonder if Home Depot has something I could use. The answer to my question was, yes. I found a bolt that was perfect for this job. I bought two just in case. I should mention here too that my replacement slide pin bolts had a slightly smaller head size. They were 13 millimeters instead of 14 millimeters. The new bolts went on all caliper pins and the brake job was complete. After reinstalling the reservoir cap, the wheels, and pumping the brakes, I gave the car a test drive. 
success. No more weird vibrations coming from the brake pedals. The unevenly worn pads were the problem after all. So the moral of the story is, make sure you're turning the wrench in the correct direction when loosening or tightening bolts. Always practice safety when working on a vehicle. Hit that subscribe button if you found this story inspiring. And also be sure to visit 1A Auto as they provided great instructions on how to do this brake job. And visit Chris Fix's channel for many automotive tips and tricks and do-it-yourself guides. Thanks for watching.